Yo, my name is Benjamin, and this is 3D Transforms in Framer. A huge leap forward, unlocking tons of new possibilities. And in this video, I'd like to show you a few. So let's start with the basics. There's a brand new section available in the property panel called Transforms. Here you'll find a collection of new properties. Let's start by adding rotation. This has a new control allowing you to pick between a 2D and a 3D rotation. Let's set it to 3D and this gives us access to X, Y and Z rotation. And if I scrub along some of these properties, you'll see this will rotate our selected layer in 3D. While rotated, our layer still appears quite flat. To fix that, we can add perspective. And I'll set it to a thousand. And this has a big impact on the rendering of our layer. What's especially unique here is that our entire selection UI is able to be projected in 3D space as well. This means you can freely select, edit, resize and rotate your layers even if they are transformed. Whereas most tools keep the bounding boxes 2D, Framer goes the extra mile, resulting in an editing experience unlike any other. On our layer, I'll set rotate X to zero and rotate Y to 45 degrees. Next, we can add an effect to animate our cover. I'll add a loop effect. We brought our new 3D properties to all effects as well. I want our cover to spin infinitely starting from our 3D position. So I'll set rotate Y to 360. We've also updated our effect edit mode to accurately represent any layer that's skewed in 3D space. Meaning you now get a more accurate representation of every single effect in Framer. I'll set the time of this effect to 4 seconds. And then let's go ahead and give this a preview. Our cover now rotates seamlessly starting from a 3D position. Next, I'd love to show you the new origin property. Let's bring over the effect and the transform to our second cover. To do so, I'll simply copy both and paste them onto the second layer. And maybe we'll invert the starting position by setting rotate Y to minus 45 degrees. Next, I'll click on transforms to add the origin property. This allows us to change the origin of our transforms. I'll set the X to 0% and then let's give this a preview. Our second cover now rotates around its left hand side here instead of the center. So using origin gives you tremendous control over your animations. It even impacts the editing experience on the canvas. If I set the origin Y to zero as well, and then I were to rotate this layer on the canvas, notice how it now rotates around the top left point instead of the center. And those are the basics of 3D transforms in Framer. Next, let's look at animation in more detail by recreating a card flip animation. I'll first give this a preview to show you what we're about to make. We're going for this card flip effect that seamlessly switches between two different images, is rotating in 3D space, and is draggable by using layered effects. We'll start with these two images. This will be the front side, and this will be the backside. To visualize how this effect is achieved, I'll start by adding a loop effect to both of these cards individually. We know how this works by now. I'll add a loop effect, set the time to something like three seconds, 
and I'll set rotate Y to 360. Then I'll copy this effect and I'll paste it onto the second cover here as well. And if we give this a preview, both are animating, but they are appearing quite flat. And that's because they are missing a perspective property. So I'll add the perspective property to both layers. And there we go. So as you can see now, the back faces or the back sides of these images are still visible as they rotate. And there's a property that controls this behavior for us. And it's called the backface property. I'll add this property to the second cover and I'll set it to hidden. And if we go back to the preview, notice how as it rotates beyond 180 degrees, the entirety of the backside is hidden. And this is how we can switch between these two images. I can do the same to the first cover but then they'll be hidden at the same time and we need them to hide interchangeably. To fix that, we can go to the second cover and set rotate Y to 180. So its looping effect will start from here and you'll see it now hides on the canvas and this is because it starts out showing you the back face and we've set the back face to hidden. Now, back in the preview, one more time, we see that the cards now hide interchangeably, only showing one side at a time. Now, I'm sure you can guess what's coming next. We can stack these cards on top of each other by centering them to create our card flip effect. And now we're getting the effect that we're after. And we have a better understanding of the back face property but using two separate effects isn't ideal when we could group these cards and use a single effect. To do this, I'll select both of our covers and I'll hit Command Enter to wrap them in a frame. Let's name this Flip. Then I'll grab the loop effect from the front and I'll remove it. And I'll also remove it from the back and I'll instead paste it onto the flip layer and set overflow to visible. Now we have a single layer that influences our rotation, but our effect is no longer working. This is where I'd like to introduce the preserve 3D property. By adding this, we'll let the browser know we want the nested layers to exist in the same 3D space as this layer. And then we can also add perspective here instead. And maybe I'll set the time to be a bit slower. So four seconds, so we can see the effect properly. And just like that, we've now greatly simplified our card flip setup using only a single looping effect, ensuring they can never get out of sync. As a final touch, we can add an additional dragging effect on top just to show you how you can mix and match different effects. I'll add another frame around our flip frame and I'll call it drag. Here I'll set overflow to visible and I'll simply add a drag effect using all the default settings. And there we go. We've added a dragging effect on top of our existing 3D animation. And that's it for part two, mixing animations with 3D transforms. Now onto the final part, interactions. We've ensured that 3D transforms in Framer are compatible with all existing interactive tools and components. And I'd like to show you three examples. The first example being 3D transforms are completely compatible with our recently announced custom cursor feature. You can even switch cursor variants without interrupting your 3D animation. 
This second example illustrates that these new properties are also compatible with our existing interactive and creative components. In this demo, I've applied a 3D rotation to the slideshow component. I get an accurate representation on the canvas. And when I give it a preview, you can see that everything keeps working as expected. No extra setup required. And for the final and third example, these new features are extremely useful for projection. That is, projecting assets, videos, or entire interactive experiences onto 3D devices or 3D planes. This allows you to show off your product in new creative ways with incredible fidelity. Here, I've simplified the demo site for custom cursors and am projecting it onto this iPad render. All animations and interactions keep working and are rendered in 3D space. And that's it for part three and this video. Framer is the first tool to offer a real 3D transform editing experience on a freeform canvas. And I found that this encourages playful exploration and invites happy accidents to your creative work. Combined direct manipulation, animation, and interactive tools lead you to new ideas you wouldn't come across in any other environment. And that, that is the magic of Framer.